First of all, I pay my humble obeisances to Nitya Lila, to Vishnu Mishnupada, to Trasatu, to Srimad Bhakti Vedanta, to Swami Maharaj, and to Srimad Bhakti Vedanta, to Srimad Bhakti Vedanta, to Swami Maharaj. Ashtu we are discussing the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. As you heard the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, what's the conclusion of that? What is the meaning of that word Gita? which you sing, that thing which you sing about will give you deliverance from this material world and bring you to the Lord. Of all the scriptures, the Gita is the most supreme one. In Gita it is said Bhagavan Uvacha. That means that Bhagavan Krishna is speaking to all the jivas. He is explaining the Bhagavad Gita to us. And Arjun is an eternal associate of the Lord. He doesn't need to explain these things to Arjun. 
An eternal associate doesn't get illusioned by Maya. Maya cannot touch them. But Bhagwan is there at Kurukshetra and taking Arjun as a way to give us this knowledge. The first lesson is to learn about what is this world. What do we call this material world? We are all saying this world. What is this world? And what is Maya? What is the soul? Who has seen the soul? No one has seen the soul or heard about it. And who do we call Bhagwan? So many questions can raise in your heart. And if you listen to the Gita, if you hear or read it yourself, then all the doubts in your heart will disappear. Because this Gita is called Bhagavai Murti. <clears throat> it's the embodiment of Bhagavan himself. It's transcendental. We have these material senses. And we cannot accept this. So the jiva keeps wondering. Here and there, it cannot understand. And when it tries to understand, it doesn't even try to understand. So Bhagavan explains in the Gita, Arjun, listen. It's very difficult to understand this. That thing that is transcendental, we cannot understand with our material senses. But by listening to Katha, by associating with sadhus, with the mercy of the Lord, then we can understand Bhagavan. And before that, it's not possible. We can easily understand about Maya. We go to school, we learn all these things in big books. We can read them easily. But Gita, how big is it? In Holland, it's 1,000 pages, but the original Gita, how many pages is that? There are many purports in those 1,000 pages, but if you look at only the shlokas, the text, it's 700 by um, 45 shlokas. A very small book. If you only read the shlokas, it's not that big book. But in the old days, the people read Sanskrit. They could speak Sanskrit. And Sanskrit was called Devabhasha, the language of the demigods. But slowly on, we forgot that language. And at schools, they don't even learn Sanskrit. In India, it's even called a dead language. There's no need for this language because the atheist people say, what's the use of learning this language? And slowly on, we are forgetting spirituality. 
And we are walking towards Maya. If you look at a small child, if you say a bad thing, the child will remember it very quickly. But if you read a shloka of the Gita, he will forget that. Why? That's called Maya, Maya's influence. Where there are sadhus speaking, we have difficulties of sitting. But if we go to a cinema, we can sit there easily for hours. If we sit in front of the TV, we can forget time. But when there is Bhagavad Gita, there is spoken about Gita, we have so much difficulty in sitting there. Because our material Spirit, our senses, they have difficulties with transcendental things. And if we cannot understand those things, and we won't try to understand it, then we can't keep our minds to it. And as soon as we get the taste of something, we like it, then we can keep our mind fixed on it. And everyone has a different taste. And when we sit in satsang, then slowly on, you will get the taste of it. And as long as you don't have the mercy of the Lord, you will not like this satsang. And as long as you don't do satsang, we cannot understand the spiritual things. So, the conclusion of all the scriptures is sadhu sangha. Only with satsang, slowly on, you, it will bring you closer to the transcendental Lord. Shraddha, faith, bhakti, rati. In the third canto of the Bhagavatam, there's a conversation going on between Kapil Dev and Ma Mother Devuti. She asked to Lord Kapil Dev, you give me the last instruction to me, what will I do? Bhagavan Kapil Dev started to explain his mother. There is only one important thing in this life to sit in satsanga. Where a sadhu is giving you upadesh, knowledge. And where the beautiful katha of Bhagavan is spoken, listen to that, by listening to that katha, all the misery in your life, all the problems will disappear. I will tell you a small story. How satsang can change your life? So there is a black bee, a bumblebee. He's flying around, buzzing around. And when he comes somewhere, 
कुछ गोबर पड़ा है गोबर समझते तो वहां पर बहुत दुर्गंधा आ रहा था एंड इट वाज स्मेलिंग वेरी बैड और जो है और जो ब्लैक बी वेंट अवे फ्रॉम देयर गोबर से एक कीड़ा निकल कर आया फ्रॉम दैट काउ डंग अ स्मॉल वर्म केम आउट डंग बीटल का इट्स कॉल्ड अ डंग बीटल गोबर में कीड़ा हो जाता है सब दे सो वर्म्स लिविंग इन द काउ डंग परहेप्स यू हैव सीन दिस वो डंग बीटल जो बाहर आया सो दैट डंग बीटल केम आउट So it's a very smelly place where there is cow dung. All the cow dung is put together there. So the black bee was there. And the dung beetle came out. And he said, Brahma, Black bee. You are singing very beautifully. I can't understand, but it's very beautiful. Just like we just hear the uh, kirtan, such beautiful, sweet kirtan. If you go to bridge, how much happiness you will get by hearing this kirtan? Very nice kirtan we just heard. A very nice bridge kirtan was sung. If you understand or don't understand, you will feel the happiness when you listen to kirtan from bridge. If you don't understand, if you understand everything, then no one will come. But if you listen to the kirtan of Braj, your whole body will start to dance. So the dung beetle started to say to the black bee, "You have a very nice kirtan you're singing. From where are you?" So the black bee said, "Look, I'm coming from Manas Sarovar. Where is this Manas Sarovar? It's in Nepal and India. It's a point where China, Nepal, and India meet. So in June, July, people go there because it's very beautiful." And there are mountains. One way, one side you have China, on the other side you see Nepal, and in the other side you see India. So in the middle, it's called Manas Sarovar. And you see these mountains all around you. Such a beautiful place. And the water, it's very nice. If you put a coin in the water. You will see where it comes in the water. It's very clear water, very nice blue color of the water. And in all four directions, you see nice trees with flowers, and so many beautiful birds. And in that sarovar, in that lake, there are lotus flowers. And there are trees with fruits around the lake. All these different kinds of birds are living there. And there are so many beautiful flowers. And the demigods even come there. If you have a moment, go there once. In the scriptures, it says, where the devas come, it's their holy place. If we go there, our heart will become soft. 
What's the specialty of all those holy places? Why do people go there? People work all day in this world, they get tired. And by going there, they get rid of that fatigue. They go on pilgrimage. But what's the meaning of going to a pilgrimage? It's Sadhu Sangha. You should be with sadhus, you should speak about Bhagavad Gita, hear about Bhagavad Gita. And on the pilgrimage place, you see demigods there to do some meditation. If you go on such a beautiful, if you go to such a beautiful place, your your heart will become soft. Just close your eyes and take that peace. So that black bee started to say, "Look where I come from." Is Manasarovar. It's also called Deustali, the place where demigods stay. It's so beautiful. All the unwanted things like lust, anger, envy, delusion will disappear there and your meditation will start by itself. It's such a holy place. So when the Bhagavad started to say these words, the dumb beetle, when we listen to Katha, our mind wakes up, and that's what happened to that dung beetle. We think, how do the people live there? What do they do? Just like when we are hearing about Vrindavan, then we are thinking, how is Vrindavan? How do those people live there? How do they love Bhagavan? How do they worship him? Sukdeva Goswami was singing the glories of Vrindavan. If you hear this, you will also want to go to Vrindavan at least once in your life. Vrindavan has such beautiful glories. Where people are always singing Radha Nam. What are they saying? What kirtan? In Vrindavan, all the trees, what are they saying? Radhe Radhe. Raskhan is writing in Vrindavan, the trees, and every branch, it's written Radhe Radhe. And the waves of the Jamuna are saying Radhe Radhe. In Ganga, the Jamuna are saying Radhe Radhe. No one is saying Krishna. What are they saying? Radhe Radhe. If you ever go to Vrindavan, when they see you coming, and all the small children, they say Radhe Radhe, they will run behind you and say Radhe Radhe. And the Brajavasis, 
They will give you chach. Do you know what chach is? That is called buttermilk. It's buttermilk. Very fresh rotis. And dahi, milk. If you ever go there, you will see this. Very nice warm rotis and makan butter. And charge the buttermilk. Very beautiful, those Brajavasis, the people living in Brajavas, uh, in Braj. So everyone is doing the kirtan of Radha. Even the birds say Radhe Radhe. They say nothing else than Radhe Radhe. So let's go back to the Katha. If you go to Vrindavan, you will see the footprints of Govinda. When Krishna was playing the flute, when did he play the flute? 5,000 years ago. Thousand. Five thousand years. Five thousand years. He was playing the flute, and what happened to the rocks? They, they melted, and then the footprints of Govinda and in the rocks. Not only one place, but many places. And not only of Krishna, but also of Balaram, also of the peacock. And of the deer, and of the cows, you will see all these footprints. And where Govinda put down his bamsi, you will even see the print of the bamsi. People don't believe this. They say it's a mythology. But it's true, you have to see it yourself. All these places where you see the footprints of Govinda. And how to know that these are the footprints of Govinda? You will see the marks. So beautiful is Vrindavan Dham. Okay, let's go back to the Katha now. So what did the bumblebee say? Where do I come from? Manas Sarovar. And try to remember this. Manas Sarovar. It's such a beautiful place. And the dung beetle thought, I also want to go there. But how should I go there? That dung beetle doesn't have uh, wings to fly there. You know, if you're that enthusiastic to go, come sit on my back, said the black bee. Come sit on my back and I will bring you there, said the bumblebee. And that dung beetle. He climbed on the back of the bumblebee. And what did the bumblebee do? He started to fly. Very quickly. And as he told about Manasarovar, that's how beautiful it was. Such beautiful water, such beautiful flowers. And what did the Dung beetle do? There was this big lotus flower opened up and he went into that flower. <coughs> when the sun comes up, the lotus flower opens up. 
And when the sun sets, then the lotus flower closes again. The lotus flower, it's beautiful because when the sun comes up, the petals open. And when the sun sets, those petals close again. <coughs> So that dung beetle, he went in the flower and he was drinking the honey and he didn't notice when the sun set and the flower petals closed again. And sometimes in life this also happens. Everything has a time, and everything works by time. With time, some everything starts and ends. This is called Kaal and Akal. When it's time, we get everything. That's called time. Just like in Gita, it's explained, there are five main subjects, not six, not four, but five main subjects. And what are those main subjects? Do you remember? I've told this before, but these are new people, so I'll, I'll explain them. Ishwar, Jiv, Ishwar means Bhagwan, the Lord. The, the one that controls everything, it's called Ishva. Jiva is a part of Bhagavan. Jiva is the soul. Prakriti, it's the nature. For, what is the fourth one? Gao, time. It, sometimes it's day, sometimes it's night. We call this time, Kaal. And the fifth one, Karma. <coughs> and with time, everything happens. When the right time comes, we get everything. If you look at your life, I'm not only really speaking words, just look at your life, I'm, it's also a practical thing. When it's the right time, you have a friend, and when the time comes, that same friend can become your enemy. When you even didn't disturb that one, but that friend can become your enemy. Why? Just look at your life. You will see this happening. Suddenly you have a friend and suddenly he's your enemy. But who does this? It's time. Time does this with you. Tulsi Das says in Ramcharit Manas, with time we get everything and with time we also leave everything behind. With time you came here, and when it's the time again, you will also leave this place again. And as time goes by, we also get a pride. Just like when you're sitting somewhere. Where are you sitting? On a chair, right? When you sit on this chair, you get a pride. Try to understand what I am speaking. If you are any officer, you are thinking, this is my chair. If you are... I am minister. I am prime minister. I am these things. I am officer. I am doctor. I am lawyer. Chair. Chair means asan. Sit. Automatically, 
और एक दिन जब रिटायर हो जाएंगे तब वो चेयर को आप यू हैव दिस पोजीशन योर होल लाइफ दिस चेयर योर होल्डिंग एंड द डे यू रिटायर यू लीव दिस दिस चेयर कितने समय होने पर वो आसन के आप छोड़ करके चले जाएंगे So when the time comes, you will leave that chair again. Doesn't matter what job you had—a teacher, a doctor, a lawyer—you will leave that chair one day. Just like you're sitting here on the chair. How many hours have you been sitting there? Three hours. For three hours. Will you go without the chair, or will you take the chair with you? Will you go here without the chair, or will you take the chair with you? You will leave the chair, right? No one will take the chair because then the security will come after you. No one will. No one will go with the chair. But if you even take the chair, the security will come after you. So where we sit. For the time that we are sitting there, we have some pride. This body is also like a chair. In our body, we have this soul. As long as we're sitting on this chair, we have a pride. And as long as the soul is in this body, we give this false identification. And what is that? I am man. I am a woman. I am doctor. I am lawyer. And many kinds of our false identification I am giving, but the body, the soul, soul that is kept minimal, pure. Then when soul goes out, that time nothing. For this regard, I am giving this example. Then this chair is as like this body is as like chair. Our soul. Is sitting on the chair of the body. Then, in Upama me de ramo. This is the example. Then, you will, your body will not go with you. Then, soul automatically go one body to another body. Then, Simad Bhagwat Gita discourses these things. Then, Atma goes one body to another body. Then, they know us when jatha de. कोमारम जोगन अनुज्ञा था। This thing is going this way, one body to one body, just is going this way. But how long will you stay in this body? Also, this also one certain time, five years, ten years, twenty years, or fifty years, eighty years, hundred years, but not more than this. This is true. In Satta Yugas, people they live in this body and one hundred thousand years, एक लाख साल रहते थे। त्रेता युग में हो गया और एक जीरो कम हो गया। कितना हो गया? In Treta Yug, they lost one zero, so they lived ten thousand years. We're going to do some mathematics again. In Dwapar Yug. Thousand years, another zero. And in Kaliyug, even hundred years, another zero. They wiped away. So after your fifty birthday, the body becomes weaker. When you have become ninety or hundred, that's very rare. This body is like that. Time is very powerful. So time is very powerful. With time we meet. With time we leave each other. According to time we are meeting together. According to time we also separate each other. आइए मैं जिस कथा को मैं बता रहा हूँ 
So we're going back to that gatal. Where was that dung beetle sitting? He was sitting inside that lotus flower because the sun had set and the flower petals had closed. So time does dissolve. And what was that time? When it's time to leave this world, then satsang happens. In Bhagavad, it's explained. Jiva doesn't have satsang. In Srimad Bhagavad, Srila Subhadra Goswami says, when it's time for your mukti from this material world, salvation, then Bhagavan brings you into satsanga. Not everyone comes in satsang. Only when the time has come for salvation from this world. That when Lord, He arranges how to get the association of Sat. Isukade Bhava Bhavargu Brahmuta Jada Bhavit Janasutaha Chuta Sat Samagamam That Purja Kya Bhutte Jave Ushito Asi Ek Sundas Elm Samay Bhi A Gya O Samay Kya Tha So what's the conclusion? There was a very beautiful day coming, that was the parents' day of Shu. Do you all know about Shu? So it was Shu's appearance day, and a princess, she took a vow. Today I will do the mantra of Shuji and I will offer him 108 lotus flowers. So the princess is walking around to pick 108 lotus flowers. And she came to that same lake where this big lotus flower was there. And inside, who was there? The dung beetle was in that lotus flower. So you see, Bhagwan arranges things so beautifully. Who arranges these things? Bhagwan. The Lord arranges the association with Sadhu for you. So the princess picked this very nice lotus flower. And on Shiv Maharatri, she sat in front of the Shiv link and started to do the Shiv mantras. What is that mantra? Om Namah Sivaya Sabi lo jab karo Om Namah Sivaya Shu is a Vaishnava. Of all the Vaishnavas' servants, the best servant is Mahadeva. Vaishnava 
of all the Vaishnavas, of all the devotees of the Lord, the first best one is Shiv. Shiv is also seen as Guru. So never talk badly about Shiv. If you don't get the mercy of Shu, if you speak badly about him, you will never get the mercy of the Lord. Because he is very dear to Bhagwan. So the princess had this meditation she was doing, she was performing. And she was offering every lotus flower. She had said 107 mantras and offered 107 flowers. And then she came to that big lotus flower. So we started the feet and we put them together. And on top came the 108 on the head of Shu. So where is the dung beetle now? On the head of Shuji. Where did he live in the cow dung? And where did he come now? Inside a very nice lotus flower, and on top of that, he is on the head of Shuji. So the mantras were finished. And in the scriptures, it's written that after Archie, after worshiping, what we have offered, we have to take them away again. He called it Visarjan. So the next day, the princess took all those lotus flowers and put them in Ganga. So the sun rose again, and what happens when the sun rises? The flower petals open. And the dung beetle came out of that lotus flower and he took some Ganga Jal. And the holy Ganga Jal he drank. And after that, he left that body of a dung beetle and took the nice body of a demigod and went to the heavenly planet. So you listen to a Harikata, but what's the meaning of this Gata? Who is this dung beetle? That are the jivas in this world. We don't know what Bhagwan is. We are living in this smelly world. And we see the misery as happiness. Because we don't know what real happiness is. We want happiness. Do you want happiness? But where is that happiness? In Bhagavad it's written, where is this happiness? Where there, where there is the God's abode? Why is Bhagwan called Sukhadam? Look, you have electricity in your house. Where does the electricity come from? It's coming from the power station. We call this in Hindi Bijili Ghar. Power station is English. In Hindi, it's called Bijli Ghar. So in your house, you have electricity. But your house isn't the Bijli Ghar. The power station is not your house. In every house, there's electricity. But not the, the house is not called a power station. The electricity comes from the power station to your house. So the abode of Pagan is called Sukhdhav, where all the happiness is. 
तुलसीदास जी रामचंद्र के रामचरितमानसिंग आनंद बट वी डोट नो अबाउट वी आर लिविंग इन दिस गोविंग फ्रॉम वन बॉडी टू अनदर टू अनदर वन एंड to innumerable bodies and living with lust, anger, envy, illusion and we are living in this misery of the material world just like a donkey the male donkey oh. So the donkey doesn't hit from front, she hits from the back. So don't walk behind the donkey, he will kick you, it's their nature. So Maya is like a donkey, just like the female donkey, and the jiva is running behind the donkey and the donkey is kicking us kicking us she is giving us trouble and we don't know happiness we don't know where to find this happiness we are all looking for this happiness who doesn't want happiness please <coughs> happiness we all want happiness someone wants happiness in food he is called bhojan anand someone likes nice ladies bhojan anand and some likes to sleep nicely you can wake them up like kumbhakaran but they won't wake up they keep sleeping how long did kumbhakaran sleep 6 months How long will you sleep? If you sleep too long, you'll get a headache. You'll become thick. <laughs> And if you sleep less, you will become thin. <laughs> I'm not saying this. If you sleep much, you'll get fat in your body. So your sleep shouldn't be too less and also not too much. so that happiness is with the Lord there is bliss in Harikatha in the Seva in the devotional service there is Anand let's go that way to hear about the Lord to serve the Lord but the Jiva doesn't know this Some are blissful in eating, in sleeping, and all of this is missing. So the Bhagavad is giving us this message. Oh friends, oh mothers, oh sisters, listen, open up your ears. Come to my abode, Bhagavan says. Come to my abode. My abode is the Sukhadham where all the happiness is. You won't have any problems there. But who will tell you about this place? Who will take you there? A sadhu in the form like the black bee. So the black bee was actually the sadhu and these sadhus tell us oh brothers oh sisters oh mothers listen come towards Bhagavan it's such a beautiful place there is so much happiness there let's go that way but how do we go there you can't go there 
So, the Zadu say, come, sit on my back. What's the meaning of that? To listen to Harikatha. We can't do anything for Bhagwan. Bhagwan says, just listen to my Harikatha. By listening to the Katha of Bhagwan, your life will become pure again. You don't have to do anything else. Srimad Bhagavatam is giving the evidence. You don't have to do anything. Bhagavan says, just hear my Harikatha. Don't do anything else. What you are doing here, listening to the Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, hearing about Bhagavad Gita, this is the only thing you have to do. Listen to the Katha. Where did the Brahma bring that dung beetle to Manasarovar? And from that Manasarovar, he came in this beautiful lotus flower. That lotus flower is like the nectar of Bhagavad Gita. So then the princess took him to Shuji. And who is Shuji? Shuji is our guru. And when you go to the lotus feet of the guru, where will the guru, guru bring you? Towards Bhagavan. And Bhagavan says, when you have come towards me, I will give you my Charanamrit, and that's Ganga Jal. What's Ganga Jal? A Charanamrit of Bhagavan. If you go to a temple, you will see Charanamrit Pan Ki Jir. It means take this Charanamrit. The Pujari will give you that Charanamrit in your hand. So after washing the feet of the Lord, the water has become Charanamrit. And that Charanamrit will give you salvation from this world. So Ganga Jal is not something ordinary. So Sadhu Sangha is the main thing of our life. It will take you towards Bhagavan. So you keep coming to satsanga, listen to Harikatha. Bhagwan says, you cannot do bhajan of me. You cannot get the taste in doing my enchanting. So listen to my Harikatha. After hearing this Harikatha, what will happen? By listening to my Harikatha. How should you listen? Listen with one ear and keep it in your heart. Don't let it get out from the other ear. Maya Devi is very powerful. She gave us two ears. From one side it comes in and from the other side it goes out. But don't let it get out. Hear from one side and keep it in your heart. Dulsi Das gave nice examples in Ramchirit Manas. How should you listen to Katha? Listen to Harikatha. Not only listen. A guru, guru told his disciple, Son, bring me a glass of water. The disciple was sitting down. And Guru Dhir said, Bring me one glass of water. Did you hear? And the disciple said, Yes, Guru Dev, I heard. No, you did not hear. So he said again, Guru Dev, I'm not deaf. So what did I say to bring a glass of water? No, you did not hear me. So the disciple said, Guru Dev, I'm bringing the water. And he went away. After 10 minutes, he came back and he said, Gurudev, what water will you drink? 
Would you like cold or warm water? After 10 minutes, my throat is dried up. And now you're asking me what water? So the disciple went. After 10 minutes, he came back and said, Gurudev, what water should I bring? <laughs> water from the tap or mineral water? No, you're crazy. I don't need any water. No, Gurudev, I will bring you the water. Gurudev said, okay, where we go to a shop, bring me mineral water, you will disappear. Who has gone, has gone. So just bring me tap water. And then again, after 10 minutes, he came back with empty hands. Hey, where is my water? Gurudev, tell me. In what glass do you want to drink? Would you like copper or plastic or silver? Glass. In what, in what cup will you drink? So Gurudev said, bring me plastic. So when I say this glass, you will go search for it and will come back. So after 10 minutes, he came back again without the water. And then disciples said, Gurudev, that water I should bring. Should I bring it on a tray or just with my hands? Gurudev said, I don't need that water. No, please, Gurudev, I will give you the water. It doesn't go like this, right? When you hear something, what I just told you, you sh it, shouldn't be, it shouldn't go like this. What you hear, you have to do what you hear. And otherwise, your Gurudev will stay with a dry throat. It will take an hour and he will still have no water. So, when you listen, what's listening? You have to take that in your heart. What you're hearing from the Gita, the meaning, the point is that we are not this body, we are the soul. We are part of Bhagwan. What is our task? to serve the Lord. That's our duty. That's our prime duty. In the first chapter it's written, you are not this body, you are the soul. <laughs> So tomorrow we will continue. Hare Krishna. Puja Bhad Bhakti Vedanta Bhad Maharaj Ki. So mensen, we hebben vandaag het eerste gedeelte van het Bhagavad Samar achter de rug. Waar we begonnen zijn om basis te leggen. We hebben vandaag alleen maar de basisprincipes gesproken. Dat we eerst moeten beseffen dat wij een eeuwige spirituele ziel zijn. En nu wordt het interessant. Hoe zijn wij vanuit de spirituele, als de spirituele ziel in het lichaam beland? Wat is het hele doel om dan vanuit de spirituele entiteit in de materiële wereld te leven? En waarom gebeuren er zulke dingen? Waarom overkomt dit ook? Sint Christa gaat het verder uitleggen. Hoe wij hier zijn gekomen en hoe we ook hier uitkomen.